there are more than a million mopeds, motorcycles and scooters in the UK. They're fast, convenient and cheap. But now hundreds of them are also being used to commit shameless crimes. Get away! Hey, hey, whoa, whoa. Moped thieves are stealing mobile phones, valuable jewellery, even other mopeds to commit more crimes, often attacking and injuring their victims. There are more than 10 times as many moped crimes as there were five years ago. Oh my God! And many of them are being caught on camera. Now, we meet the victims at the centre of these terrifying crimes. It's a jungle out there. I see moped thieves on the road more than I actually see police. The people who fought back. He was getting on the back of the bike, and before I know it, I was just running at him. Two mopeds have been stolen. The police fighting the modern-day menace on our streets. It's a myth that we won't pursue motorbikes and mopeds. We can, we will, and we do. Plus, experts reveal how the moped gangs really operate. Just through the movements of the moped indicates to the guy on the back who they're targeting and which person they're going to snatch that phone from. They do their patrols like a cop. They have researched it. They're not stupid. They're some of the most shocking crimes in the UK today, affecting thousands of people across the whole of Britain. Get that license plate. Get that license. These are the stories of moped muggers caught on camera. A new threat has emerged on Britain's streets. Moped crime. In London alone, police recorded more than 22,000 crimes involving scooters, mopeds and motorbikes in a single year. That's more than 60 every day. In fact, moped crime increased by 30 times in the capital between 2012 and 2017. These crimes can be violent. The criminals are brazen. <laughs> reckless. And dangerous. And the victims can be on foot. On four wheels. Or on two. Someone who's seen more than his fair share of moped crime is professional bike courier Omar. Moped thieves are really the highwaymen of the 21st century. I've been targeted whilst working numerous times. To be honest, I can't even count how many times because it's been that many. After being the victim of so many crimes and witness to many others, Omar decided to start filming his shifts just in case. And it wasn't long before he was capturing criminal behavior. As I was driving down the main road and I was singing along and really enjoying myself as I usually do. And right, I got my gun, send me automatic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I realize a really bright light behind me, like a glare in my mirrors. Up, up in the way, man, I come down in the... And I sort of look behind me, and the first thing I see is two guys on a blacked out scooter. Okay. Immediately I knew, you know, what the deal was. Realizing he was being followed by moped thieves, Omar turned down an alleyway that's a popular hangout for couriers. But there was no one there. You've got to make a decision, confront them or give them the bike. And, you know, I knew I would have to have fight for my bike. I thought they had knives. 
So the only thing I kept thinking of was don't let these guys get close to you, don't let these guys get close to you. The thieves were determined to steal Omar's £4,000 bike, almost certainly to use in other crimes. But he was determined not to let them. Eventually, the thieves left empty-handed, leaving Omar relieved but shaken. It took me about 10, 20 seconds until I could actually respond to the people asking me if I was OK. And really, I didn't know if I was OK. What happened? What happened? I'm to my bike, man. Do you want me to call the police? A lot of it I don't actually remember. Um, and when I like, look back at the clip, there are certain things I didn't realise you know, at the time. And I was like, wow, I, I did that. That's crazy. To protect himself against more moped muggers, Omar now wears a stab vest when he works. But just who are Britain's moped muggers? Dr Simon Harding is a criminologist who's carried out in-depth research in this field. Well, a moped criminal, as we know them to be, are, are really young men aged between uh, 14 and 21. Some of them are gang affiliated, many of them in fact, but we also find that some of them can be operating as individuals. Livy Haydock is an investigative journalist who spent time with moped gangs to learn just how shameless they are and who they target. The targets vary, so I've seen guys who have actually run into coffee shops where people have sat there with their laptops. I've met smash and grab criminals who target high street jewellers. Anything that's out in the open, these guys think is worth stealing, they're going to target it. The biggest one, I think, is your average pedestrian, often in the city, rush hour, walking around with their phone, holding their phone out. More than 80% of Brits own a mobile phone. That's around 45 million of us. And at least half admit to using their mobile while walking. But do our phones make us more likely to be a modern day mugging victim? Nearly half a million mobiles are stolen every year. More and more of them like this. Thieves recklessly mount the pavement to steal from unsuspecting pedestrians taking their victims by surprise, leaving them powerless to do anything about it. And they're persistent. Would-be thieves targeted this man before surrounding him. When he tried to run, they gave chase, knocking him to the ground, breaking his leg. Amazingly, the man was able to stagger away. On this occasion, the moped gang ended up empty-handed. Unlike these thieves, who in a matter of seconds were able to rob not one, but two people of their phones. And their choice of vehicle makes for a speedy getaway, often weaving through narrow streets and places cars can't reach. Like this pair, who had stolen 21 phones and tried to escape by riding through a market. The driver got away, but the pillion passenger was arrested. It seems none of us are safe from the threat of moped muggers, not even the people who run the country. This is the moment former Chancellor George Osborne almost became a victim. Mr Osborne said he was shocked and stunned by what had happened. The thieves who had robbed more than a hundred other people were jailed. Hello, very good evening. It's five minutes past five. You're listening to Ian Dale at Drive on LBC. Well, moped crime, as you know, it happened to me a few months ago. Figures out today don't make for very happy reading. What can be done about solving moped crime? Radio presenter Ian Dale is one of the thousands of pedestrians who became victims of moped muggers. Well, I was standing on a street corner in central London and I was looking at a map on my phone and then my phone wasn't there suddenly. And it takes a moment to compete what's happened. And I looked to my left, and sure enough, a moped was disappearing up the street. At the time, Ian took it in his stride, but later realized how serious it could have been. Somebody said to me, well, think yourself lucky because you could have had acid thrown in your face. And then it really brought home to me what the consequences could have been. 
Ian believes we all need to be more vigilant to avoid moped muggers. It is up to us as individuals to try and deter them from doing it by not making it easy for them. But there's more to phone snatching than meets the eye. The criminals tend to know the areas that they're operating in very well. They tend to have uh, undertaken surveillance or uh, a recce of the area beforehand. Sometimes they will work with a spotter. This is a pedestrian who is uh, walking along the street who may call them and say, yeah, there's a lot of activity on this particular street. Once stolen, the phones are quickly disposed of. I went with one moped thief to get a better understanding as to what they're doing with the stolen phones. Now, he took me to uh, meet his guy he called the cash converter. This is a guy who is buying the phones off him from anywhere between 50 to 200 pounds, and then this gentleman takes them out of the country. Unwitting pedestrians have been described as smartphone zombies, paying no attention to their surroundings. For former police officer Chris Hobbs, there's one golden rule to follow to avoid becoming a victim. Be very aware of where you are. Get over to a building or to a shop front and walk along so that someone can't simply come up and snatch it from you. So it almost as if the building acts as some sort of shield to you. Coming up, how did this jeweler react when moped criminals robbed his shop? I think the adrenaline just kicks in, takes over. And high-speed pursuits that show why moped thieves are so hard to catch. He put himself at risk, other people at risk. Ultimately, he was a danger to everyone surrounding him. Fantastic, incredible is how the dealers describe the boom. If it goes on like this, there'll soon be as many motorbikes on the roads as cars. Mopeds and motorbikes gained huge popularity in the UK back in the 1970s. Then fuel prices were skyrocketing and commuters were looking for a cheap, quick way to get around. Well, it's cheaper, it's much more fun. I'd, I'd never take to a car after this. Unfortunately, today's moped criminals favour two wheels for similar reasons. This police car was chasing a suspect on a moped who made an all-too-easy getaway. And sometimes criminals will put themselves in incredible danger to try to avoid arrest. MP still against traffic, fast-moving traffic, uh, back onto the A506. This crook thought it would be a good idea to ride the wrong way down the motorway. It wasn't. Just confirm that location then, Piva. Yeah, he has come off the bike. He's off, off the bike. Uh, temporary crash. He was fleeing after stealing 18 mobiles and was riding a stolen moped. Eventually, he was caught and jailed for two and a half years. In London, the Metropolitan Police have specially trained officers in a unit with the sole purpose of bringing moped criminals to justice. It's called Operation Venice, and one of the officers working on it is PC George Ancorn. Operation Venice is the Met's answer to tackling moped-enabled crime. We have a range of tactics and uh, options available to us. PC Ancorn and his partner had to use some of those tactics when they found themselves in a high-speed pursuit of a criminal riding a stolen moped on a wet, wintry night. I've spoken to him out the window to try and get him to pull over. He then looked as if he was going to pull over, but actually took a sharp uh, deviation to the right. The suspect led the officers in their patrol car on a chase at double the speed limit. I would describe his riding as utterly reckless and erratic. He put himself at risk, other people at risk, uh, pedestrians, road users. Ultimately, he was a danger to everyone surrounding him. The driving conditions made everything more difficult and more dangerous. It was a dark night, the road was damp, it was wet. There were lots of pedestrians about. The road was very busy as well. Things came to an abrupt stop 
when the suspect tried to turn back at a roundabout and the officers saw an opening to make their move. We can nudge a vehicle or, if necessary, we can hit a vehicle, potentially, with a police vehicle, if necessary. Once he was off his moped, the chase continued on foot. I already had my passenger door open because I knew that he was going to run away. Eventually managing to catch up with him, I tripped him up and was able to uh, get him on the floor. The suspect was arrested. The officers found drugs and a knife when they searched the stolen bike. He was sentenced to 21 months in a Young Offenders Institute, and PC Ancorn and his partner PC Mellis were awarded special commendations. What this case demonstrates is that we are out there chasing these suspects, uh, and it's a myth that we won't pursue motorbikes and mopeds. We can, we will, and we do. Pursuing mopeds can look extremely risky. This is the dramatic moment cops sent two moped riders spinning into the oncoming lane. Police call this tactical contact, and it requires expert training. It's completely legal, but there's still a fear of it going wrong, as former detective Nicola Thorne explains. Police officers are petrified of being prosecuted if they intercept a moped, particularly if they haven't got a helmet on or something like that. As moped muggers get more brazen, police are getting smarter, using new high-tech gadgets to fight two-wheeled crime. The police in recent months purchased their own mopeds, which are far lighter, far more adaptable, and they're having some success now in using these to pursue these criminals. Stingers, spike strips, which are rolled out in front of vehicles, are an excellent way of bringing a pursuit to a close, be it moped or car. If you're in pursuit of a moped criminal and you're not quite able to catch them, you can activate this spray. It's actually an infrared spray and it stays on your skin, your clothing and the vehicle for up to eight weeks. So with this spray, you can be linked to a specific crime. Some moped muggers have taken to carrying out elaborate robberies, targeting the rich and famous. One of their victims was West Ham footballer Andy Carroll. He was driving home from training when two men on bikes targeted him. They pulled up alongside him at lights and demanded his £22,000 watch. This footage shows Carroll desperately trying to escape weaving in and out of traffic and narrowly avoiding an oncoming lorry. One of the would-be thieves was later jailed for six years. Leroy Logan has 30 years' experience in the police. He knows these high-profile attacks are used by criminals to gain notoriety. Like everyone else, they read the newspapers or social media and they get a bit of rep, you know, from committing more outrageous crimes. Robberies in England and Wales are on the increase. And for thieves wanting to pull off a smash and grab, the vehicle of choice is often the moped. Criminals are taking advantage of the speed and manoeuvrability of the bikes as well as the helmets that hide their faces. But they're not always able to hide. This gang of 10 robbed 17 phone shops in a six-month spree. They stole goods and caused damage to the tune of one million pounds. But they were caught after police used GPS trackers in the stolen phones to find them. The gang was jailed for a combined total of 110 years. And it's not just phones. From designer clothes to expensive handbags, there's nothing thieves won't steal.
One of the most tempting targets for moped robbers are jewellery shops. Ten forty-four a.m. at Elgas Jewellers. Owner Mark and manager Elliot are busy working. The next thing I knew, the door just burst open, and there was a man standing there with an axe. Not what you expect on a Monday morning. Made a lot of mess and a lot of damage and a lot of noise. That's what they do, just shock and awe, isn't it? As the thief smashed windows and stole goods, Mark made a break for it. I just ran, ran out the back, because uh, I didn't know what he was going to do, didn't know what he wanted. My worst fear was he was just going to come at us. But as the axe-wielding robber helped himself to valuables, his moped-riding accomplice was backing into the shop. And their tactic was to make a swift getaway, after an even swifter robbery. I mean, he must have been in and out in 60 seconds, I suppose. But Mark didn't want to let them get away without a fight. I had a bat out the back. He was getting on the back of the bike. And before I know it, I was just running at him. Swung my bat, and I think I, I just hit the door. And then that moped was off like a shot. I'm not the sort of person who goes running after people with baseball bats. I think the adrenaline just kicks in, takes over. Looking back now, Mark knows his spur-of-the-moment decision could have gone very badly. In hindsight, nothing's worth getting hurt for, especially, you know, you've got a wife and kids. Fortunately, Mark wasn't injured, but the thieves made off with a considerable amount of jewellery and watches, including a diamond ring. Just a single solitaire, I think it was, and that was 15, 20 grand. I think in total they must have got away with 60, 70 grand in 60 seconds. I mean, must be why they do it. Following the robbery, police searched for the culprits, but still no arrests have been made. But officers also had a question for Mark. Why were there baseball bats in his shop in the first place? <laughs> <laughs> we have our Elgas Summer Rounders tournament, which it's always handy to have baseball bats for such events. Mark fought back. But in most cases, that's not the best course of action. They've smashed into your jewellery shop and they've got sledgehammers and they've got baseball bats, knives and guns. Then any reasonable person would think, well, it's best to let them get on with it. Other businesses have turned to a variety of technology and tactics to deter would-be thieves. Automated shutter systems that if a shop owner is under attack, then they can quickly press this button and the shutters will come down, causing the suspect to flee the scene empty-handed. There is another system. There's a device which actually fills the shop with fog. And the robber can't see what he or she is doing and then has little choice but to vacate the property. Assuming, of course, I can find the door to get out. But sometimes just witnessing a moped smash and grab can be terrifying. There is an armed robbery taking place on Fleet Street. Men with machetes. Going up towards the courts. Oh, my God. I was working in the Royal Courts of Justice on that day. I decided to take a bit of a walk, just to wander down Fleet Street. In central London, in the middle of the day, trainee barrister Sarah witnessed a moped gang launch an audacious attack on a luxury watch shop. A number of mopeds pulled up all at once. I just had a feeling that something wasn't right. I thought that it was a terrorist attack. One of them had a machete. Another one had a samurai sword. And when I saw that, I was absolutely horrified. It was at that point that I heard um, a loud smash or bang behind me. The thieves had forced their way into the shop. Once inside, they threatened staff and stole thousands of pounds worth of watches. Please, someone call the police. Someone call the police. 
The thieves escaped before the police arrived. I phoned my dad because he's ex-army and I didn't know what to do. And that's when I heard the police sirens and so I knew that obviously the authorities had been called. No one was injured during the robbery, but Sarah believes everyone involved got lucky. I think if someone's prepared to rob premises like that with weapons, you have to assume that they're willing to use them. Around 30,000 motorbikes and mopeds are stolen each year in the UK. Many are stolen to be used in crimes, and fewer than half of them are ever found. Some thieves have become experts in stealing bikes. This gang managed to ride off with this one in just seconds. Thieves will often strike brazenly in groups. Most of them stay on lookout, while one tries to remove bike locks. Some steal in the dead of night to avoid being seen. While some don't care if they attract a crowd. These thieves threatened onlookers with hammers and an angle grinder before being chased away empty-handed. It seems if you're a bike owner, your ride can be at real risk whether the criminals get away with it or not. Sean has been riding a motorbike for the past three years. His bike is worth six and a half thousand pounds. It's his pride and joy, but it seems to attract a lot of attention. I see eyes on it all the time, so yeah, that's when people just, you know, staring and then obviously the bad guys. But sometimes the bad guys do more than just stare. I saw two boys in the road, followed by, when I got closer to the window, two boys with two different tools. So one with a hammer in case we came to the door, and then one with the angle grinder. Got ya. Why are we calling the police? In broad daylight, thieves came to Sean's house to try to steal his motorbike from literally right under his nose. I've never seen anything like it. In the daytime, being told that we're calling the police and not giving a damn about anything. Yo, okay. I had a place to come and leave. Me leave me alone. Usually, people obviously do these things at night time when it's dark, but these guys were just out there. They do not care, just brazen as hell. This wasn't even the first time Sean had caught the gang trying to take his bike. That video was shot on a Sunday. They actually came on the Monday and the Friday um, each time to try and take my bike. Hey, leave, 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 leave. But it wasn't third time lucky for the thieves. They were thwarted by Sean's multiple bike locks. He lifts up my cover and finds out, hey, there's a, actually there's two more locks there. Um, tells the guy with the angle grinder. At that point, the boy with the angle grinder gets upset. Hey, he's got three out, he's got bare locks. Oh. That was just a, an act of immaturity you know, for, for someone to do that just because they couldn't get the bike. They smashed the car window to intimidate us. It's the lowest of the low. The would-be thieves made a quick getaway on mopeds, and they left Sean wondering what to do about their persistent attempts. Speaking to the police, I remember thinking to myself, shall I just get rid of my bike now? Because um, I don't want to have to go through this on a, on a daily basis. Rather than give up his bike, Sean's moved it to a different location, but still sees moped riders going up and down his road, and he thinks they're on the lookout for his motorbike. I don't think that's ever going to stop now. Um, it's just, it's every day. It literally, it's an everyday thing for them. The reasons for moped thefts seem to be pretty clear. The majority of moped crimes are committed on stolen bikes. There were 38 stolen bikes a day last year in London alone. Now, a lot of those are used in moped crimes. That's because they're untraceable. When they take the bikes, they'll often change the license plates, meaning it's even harder to track them down. If they're not using the stolen bikes to commit more crimes, they're selling them for profit. 
Some of the bikes will be uh, broken down, parts will be used in, in local uh, mechanics and chop shops. Other bikes will be perhaps uh, shipped off uh, out of the country uh, to Europe and to Africa. But sadly, a big part of moped theft is all about showing off. They will then post this up on social media and it will boost their level of uh, respect, their level of status and their street credibility and this is very much part of the game. Coming up, moped muggings from around the world. And when moped crimes go wrong, the biggest fails on two wheels. We watched it again and again and again. In fact, I even showed it to the police officers and they themselves found it extremely amusing. Moped crime might be a modern phenomenon in the UK, but in other parts of the world, it's been going on for years, including some of our favorite holiday hotspots. It seems as though it's a problem, frankly, that's been imported from abroad. Italy, for example, phone theft and other thefts, very common in terms of the moped thieves. More than four million of us Brits visit Italy every year. Prime targets for the thieves. In fact, in some Italian cities, thefts got so bad that mopeds and scooters were banned from city centres in 2005. But it didn't put a stop to them completely. During this theft, the mugger fell to the floor in the confusion. As the bag ended up in someone else's hands, no one seemed quite sure who was in the wrong. Taking advantage of the situation, the thief fled. He was later caught by police. Back in the UK, these shopkeepers weren't happy that moped thieves were robbing the jewelers next door. So they tried to stop them. They knocked one rider off his bike and kept him down until police could take over. Citizens' arrest is where a member of the public or a victim of crime will apprehend the offender and keep them until the, the police arrive. Get your hand behind your back! There are no real rules around citizens' arrest as, as long as you don't use unreasonable force. Some famous faces have been involved in similar acts of vigilante heroics against criminals. Hollywood star Tom Hardy chased down and caught a moped thief in West London. And Benedict Cumberbatch defended a delivery rider against a gang of muggers in June this year. But not all Have A Go heroes are film stars. Seasoned biker Larby found himself riding to the aid of a moped mugging victim. It happened in seconds. It happened really fast. I wasn't expecting it, neither the guy whose phone got taken. Larby says he can spot moped muggers a mile off. It's like a sixth sense feeling, so you know what to spot and how to spot it. People who drive erratically, that was kind of a giveaway. And what could be more erratic than riders mounting the pavement? It was so brazen. I decided to follow them, see exactly what's going to happen, and then they decided to jump on the pavement again. I heard shouting. It's like, hold on, what was going on here? Get that license plate! Get that license plate! What did they do? The adrenaline did kick in. My heart was pounding, the blood was flowing. Larby quickly found himself in pursuit, something police would certainly advise against. But just as quickly as the chase had started, the traffic forced Larby to stop. Car came out of the road. Obviously, he wasn't to know of what was happening. And the thieves made their getaway. One went straight and one went right. The whole robbery lasted just seconds. 
Larby's footage even showed the exact moment the thieves zeroed in on their victim. Well, I was actually surprised when I saw him running. Running on the road, I wouldn't say it was a good idea. It could have been cyclists or they could have been a bike. All four phone. Moped crime is shocking and often very distressing. But when it goes wrong for the criminals, there's sometimes a feeling of instant karma. Whether that's falling over, or falling foul of this woman on her laptop. The thief was hoping to make a quick getaway with the bar manager's computer, but it was chained to the bar. During his swift exit, he dropped his hammer, which he then came back for. But he didn't receive a warm welcome from the regulars. Estate agent Matt had to see the funny side when he watched two moped thieves trying to break into his office. We watched it again and again and again. In fact, I even showed it to the police officers and they themselves found it extremely amusing. So I saw these two chaps arriving on a uh, scooter. But what's amusing about witnessing an attempted break-in at your own business? Well, for a start, these moped riders hadn't quite mastered the dismount. And that was only the beginning for these bumbling burglars. He has a go at the front door, and then he has a go with this big, uh, what seems to be a concrete block, at the front pane glass, hits it a couple of times, and without realising, the glass came crashing down on his head. Instant karma, he got what was coming down. He got a nice blow. That's one way of putting it. But a giant shop front window falling on his head wasn't about to stop this thief. I'm assuming the window pane falling on his head made him slightly dizzy. He was probably a bit wobbly on his feet. Uh, it was quite amusing. He grabbed the uh, desktop computer, slipped on his way out. That kind of almost fell down, ran out, and off they went. An alarm linked to Matt's phone alerted him to what was happening. First I called the police. Whilst I was on the phone, I um, made my way down towards the office. By the time Matt arrived, the thieves hadn't got far. There was a few police officers hanging outside. Um, they had then told me that they had apprehended both suspects, which I thought was a great result. One was given a suspended sentence, and the other was jailed. But maybe the biggest punishment was the embarrassment. I'm guessing most of these guys on the mopeds are not master thieves. Moped muggings can make the street seem a scary place. The criminals carrying out these attacks can be dangerous and downright shameless. But the police are fighting back. We've got him. More of the muggers are facing justice. And more of the crimes are being caught on camera.